Right then, I'm going to paint it. So it's going to have a base coat first of uh, white acrylic. I do want my shop to uh, look really, really nice. Right, so I'm going to leave that now to dry. Again, just go over that. And then I've got to go over that again and paint it. Um, I don't know, I think I'm doing it pink. Right, I'm just using this one. It's Van Blyswick, I think. Holland acrylic paints. I bought this when I was in Holland. Let's just see what we're doing. I think I prefer this one. Okay. Like I say, I don't want it looking like it's perfect at all. It's uh, got to look kind of shabby-ish. So like I say, I want to um, distress it once this has dried. Do you know, I put a video up on Facebook. Um, I shared it that I'd found on um, YouTube about paying your TV licence. Um, that unless you watch BBC, you don't have to have a TV licence. It's been a con for years. Uh, a lot of people say, well, they don't watch BBC. And um, so what they've been doing is harassing people to pay the bill, uh, to buy a licence, even though they're saying they don't watch that side. Uh, and threatening them with court and everything and they can't actually do it they're, they're losing cases because all it is is they're forcing you to pay for something you don't have you don't want to watch so whether you watch it or not they're trying to for enforce the law for you to pay this tv license and if you watch the program you know that i can't remember his name nick somebody i think he is he's a consumer rights person on tv on breakfast tv a lot and he he's the one that's um telling you what to do and how not to pay your license don't answer the door if they you know if you know they're going to come don't pay the bill cancel all your um your um monthly payments because we pay ours monthly um and just don't answer the door to them because the minute you open the door and start um conversing with them they've got you and they can take you to court but if you don't talk to them you know once you know who they are don't ever let them into your home because they can't force their way in at all
they're not any law, anything to do with the law. They're Connors, the BBC, and they, um, you know, um, supported the likes of Jimmy Savile and that, so no, no way. But go look it up about doing your licence. Go look it up. You'd be surprised what information you can find out of things you'll get you're being forced for years to pay, but you don't have to. And I don't know why people shy away from things when somebody like I've put the video up, uh, shared it, but people won't comment on it because they're frightened to death of backlash. It's because you're not speaking up that people get backlash. You know, these companies, I mean, they're backlash. You have to defend yourselves. Right, that's that. And uh, I'm going to put my coffee then. Tea, whatever it is. Right, so that's that. I'm just going to leave that there to dry. And I shall be back. Right, as you can see, I've got the unit. It's now dry and I've started to distress it. I'm just using my block. Um, I think I bought it online, I can't remember. And you just... Just brush it here and there where you want to distress it. Because it's dark wood underneath, you can do a little bit extra rubbing and it'll just come out how you want it. And you can go as far as you want, you see. Because that's the look I'm after, is that distressed look. Let me just see because I have got somewhere um, a normal piece of sandpaper. When I say normal, I saw it the other day. Where did I see it? Here we are. Just it might just distress it that little bit more for me. Oops, it is it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I like that. You don't need to do much to it. I just want this a little bit more warm. Yeah, that's fine. And we can start um, filling it now. I want to prop it up. I don't need that anymore, just yet. I'm just going to pop that there. Again, let's just go through what we've already got. What did I do with that bag? Here we are. We've got... So I'm just going to put that out of the way a minute because we've got some of the jars to uh, fill in. We've got some fabrics that are ready to go. I've got some of the tape measure to do. We'll keep the little bunny thing there. Stop as if we need it for the bottles. There's another little bunny. Fabrics I'm going to need next. See, I have to stress that and I was going to put that on. I don't know what I will do now. So more of the cotton reels. There's another pack. Let's just get everything out. There we go. Right, so. I really need to get the room as well, and that's downstairs. Oops. 
we've got some of those to do that's to go in the room that I might distress and put on yet there's a little bird there's the sew machine it's the jars I'm after we're going to start and fill the jars out I've got the knitting needles to do haven't I um, yeah I'll make some of those next I'll make some of the knitting needles next Where's my little pot? Oh, I probably put them in there, didn't I? Okay. Put them there for now. Stick the buttons in there. I want these little bows just there for now because we've got to put them on a card. I've got to make some more of those, so I need to go find the other dishes. Oh, another little bunny. I like bunnies here. Right, so I'm going to stand these to one side. Sorry, I just want to get organised. That was it. They're going in there. That's to shelve it at the um, to hold the spools on. So that needs doing. That one's ready. Excuse me. I've got to make sure I get the right lids for the right little jars. Where did I just put those lids? There we are. Now, as far as I know, these tiny jars have those. No. <coughs> Not that one then, mate. It is that one. Not that one. Not that one. That's fine. Not that one. Right, so I don't need those tiny one <laughs> should do a fairy in a bottle shouldn't I like I did last time that's fine yeah that'll go in they've already got them on so these must be for these which means I've got some spare Have a look. Now, they've got some little eyes here which I'm going to use on the unit. Yeah. That's fine. Fine. <gasps> oh, bugger it. Come out, come out. <laughs> Come out! Oh, blimey heck. That, thank God for that. You don't want them to go right in, that's the point. I'll use that one. Although it didn't fit the last time I tried it. Right one for that. And they don't always have to have a stopper in it, but uh, we can shave one down. Oh, that'll do. That's that one. So they've all got one now. Right. 
so I need to start filling those up but what I'm going to do is this let me just have a drink of my coffee oh I need my coffee I just want to be able to show the chic as well as the edge. Just look, I need to test it and if it don't look right then I won't do the others. So I'm just going to flip that back and then just run the glue gun at the front and then just run oh yeah I do like it I do I do I do I do oh it looks really chic see like that and everything will lay flat so I'll glue it down and make sure it does now just say it for argument's sake like that's gonna whoa just fit there yeah is that glued in? Because I need to make them look like buttons, buttons. Oh, no, it's not. Look, see. Well, that's a handy little stopper, isn't it? Right, folks, let me just check. You can see this. Now, this is the unit finished. And unfortunately for me, um, the battery died. I can't find my spare battery. And I needed to get this finished. So, I've had to do it. So I'm just going to run through it with you and explain what I've done. It's really very, very simple. I showed you how to do the little fabric bolts. Um, I did paint and add the pole here. And just added some trims and that onto the, uh, sorry, onto the um, reels. We don't want them all together because it doesn't look natural. Um, I did put the material under here, like it's just a piece of lace. Added this one here with lots of miniatures in. This one's got miniatures in that just seed beads to make it look like buttons or beads whatever you want to call it and a couple of those left off the one that I'd put under the dome so I used it there and there I've put all the little mini cotton reels colour coordinated in there <laughs> I just love them some more fabrics here some more on reels here with the tape measure one I did this I just put some of the buttons in the dish I did another one with miniatures like a little box more of the little reels on a spool, bigger spool. Again, some tape measure and some little buttons. Some fabric bolts here. The rest of the buttons I, I left in the lid of the... It came off my um, one of my spray paints. And uh, use the larger reel here. Some more fabric bolts. And then use the rest of the um, spools there. So, I think... Oh, and these are cards. I just made little cards with bows on them and I've got one here as well and just put the little on oh, the scissors here the larger scissors and the smaller scissors are in this tub here so I hope you like that it's I enjoy doing them I really really do this is another one I did last year which was a smaller one but I made the box where this was a unit I just painted this one I actually made the box that they went in Um, here's another little unit. I mean, it all comes apart. Um, but I, they, I just buy them and then if I don't make them, I buy them. And then we just add little bits and pieces to them. I've also got these to finish, which is I'm going to do a, another set of the knitted needles.
and in the shop it's going to be like a workroom shop that i'm going to do I've also got this one. My, that came from a bathroom, and um, but I can use it to put more pins in it, or you know something. And then, of course, I need some wool, so I'm going to be doing a basket full of wool. I'm going to do some little fabric bolts and show you how to do those. Now for that, I'm going to need... Uh, let's have a look. Some chipboard. And I've got this, I'm going to stack some up on there as well. Let me just do this for you. I've got the glue gun on, so hopefully it's ready in time. Chop them up, you can have any size you want. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try and do mine roughly the same size. But they don't have to be. Now, to make it a little bit more realistic, let me just put these back in the pot. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop on one of these. It's just sat there at the moment. Do I want that one or do I want th oh, this one? Now, that's a thing because it's coming away from there. We're just going to glue a little bit of the wood. like that so it holds on to the wood don't want that that's too big I'm just gonna put that one on there it's just basically for decoration in the shop it'll look fine like that 
And then I take my lighter and just burnish all the ends off. Where? And that's fine. It's, how much would you pay for it to start off with? I mean, I did pay for this, I think it was about 80 pence. Um, but how much would you pay for one of those? That would cost you about 12 15 pound. But it won't because you can't get them. They're not made like that. That's just come out of my head, same as these. I haven't seen anybody make those. They'll be all over the bloody place now, though. So that's how you do them. Now, we've got some more there. I don't need them yet, um, but for the other units, I may do. I may take one of these out. In fact, I will do. Because I've just made it out of chipboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some of those in. See, like that. And it's beginning to look like a, a unit and that. No, I don't want that on top. No. No, I like that like that, mixed up. I think we'll put one more on there. I'm going to put a couple of smaller ones on, actually. Get some lace on. Right, let me find some flat lace. Oh yeah, of course I can. I've got tons of flat lace. Uh, come on out, mate. Bub. There we are. This one will do. We sell this, you get three metres. <laughs> I think it's three metres for a pound, one pound fifty, something like that. I'm going to do this a nice amount. Nice big bolt of fabric at least. Pop that on there and just pop that. We're going to do it like that. And then this one. I think we'll just pop on like that. So easy, aren't they? And I hope you lot have a go. 
You know, people think, oh, miniatures, don't like them. How do you know you like them if you haven't tried them? And I've told the story often enough about Pam, the late Pam, she's passed away now, but Pam... Never did a miniature in her life. And um, she started with um, miniatures in a competition I had. Uh, she won. Never done one in her life. And she did a Victorian room. And then from then on, she made miniatures for loads of people. Commissioned work. She also had all hers on show. She got really hooked on them. And she did extremely well, and she was very, very, very good. But look it up on the, my channel, Pam. Put miniatures, Pam, and you'll see what I mean. Oh, well, that was clever, wasn't it? Silly old. I nearly burnt that. Right. So that's it. And I like that. That's another one finished. Right, I'll be back in a minute. Right, what I've done is um, I've sorted the sewing table out. I will put something in here, but it's uh, just put some glasses on, a couple of reels, tape measure, sewing address, put the thread on here, coming across and down. Um, I found a thimble, an old thimble, that um, we can use as a rubbish bin, which I'll put some fabric in there. I'm just making these, which I'll show you how to do them, little balls of wool. Got a stool I might need to paint. I'm not fussed about it being mixed and matched. Uh, ma ma oh, mashed. Whatever you call it. You saw that. That's what we've just done. Um, you need a thin strip of paper. I've got these units as well that I've just... You know that tartan fabric Julie got me to make her things out of? Well, I nicked what was left. <laughs> and I've just covered my shelving. I'm not bothered because it's going to have a corner where it's... You know, in a shop you get different sections. And I'm not fussed. I can put a, a lacy thing over here, which I will. You know, like a doily. Like I've done here. Um, and I've got this one. So I've put that one on. I've glued this drawer in. I've glued that on that we made before. Um, I might put some pattern book here. I've printed a uh, some patterns off. And um, I just put a little bit of lace on here. And that's... So I'm going to have a little corner. You know, that will have these three little units in. With the sewing, t uh, sewing machine. So we're going to have a shabby, sh shabby chic section and that. So what I'm doing at the moment is this. Now, all the extras that I had from cutting, uh, you know, going the, doing the reels, all you do is wrap it around your finger. Take your strip, of course use patterned. If you have any tiny, or if you can make tiny little um, flowers, then do that and add them to the patterned. Little bit of glue to your pattern strip that you're gonna put across. And there you go, you've got a ball of wool. Flap, fan it out, fluff it out, whatever you want to do with it. Like that, little ball of wool. They are, <laughs> they do take time to do, they are time consuming, I have to say. But, they are so satisfying, because you know you've done it. You haven't had to buy them. I think Julie's paid two or three pounds for a pack of those. And I think she only got six in or twelve, something like that. She didn't get many because I called her stupid. <laughs> so you should have asked me to make them for you. Or sat and done them yourself. So um, I just thought it was silly spending money uh, when you can make your own. Right, I'm just going to get rid of this glue stick out of it because it's not working. I'm just covered in glue. It's driving me mad. Like that. So you take it off, twist once, that holds the shape. Bit of glue. Take your paper, oops. Wrap that over. Let's 
snip. Snip. And that's it, done. Ball of wool. And you pull it through. Like that. Oh, they stick to your fingers. Brr. So, um, I did have a bathtub or something. Um, now, I was going to put it in a bathtub. I might still do that, but I've lost the bloody bathtub now. I've lost the drawer now. We lost the drawer. I'm just going to pop that in. Like that, like you've left them open. Uh, bathtub. There we are. With my needles in. Now, like that. That can stay like that. I'm not, not asked to said then, sorry. <laughs> I'm not bothered about it. Gee. And on the sides, I've just put some beading and that just to hide the th rods that went through. I'm not asked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Larry. I don't mean to offend anybody. If so what I'm going to do is just start and oh, I'm going to just trim that. And just add some fabrics in there. Don't have, have it all, you know, it's just, yeah, thingy. Don't have to be neat. And then you poke that in to the bottom there. Lift your fabrics up. Poke that in there, like that. And then what you do is, you start piling. Let's, let's do these and put this one in first. You start piling. Your fabric, your wool in there. That way you don't have to put loads in. So it's got material in, silk, satins, whatever you want to call them, and it's got some little balls of wool, and you've got your little handles to move move it around. But um, so that's that. And just a little tip. Right. Let's get back to this video and see what's what. Because we've got to put this room together. Um, I can't show you the room. Yeah, I can. Let me just try. Let me just try and show you the room. And I'll clean up later. <laughs> I wanted to clean up. Before I packed things, I've nearly had enough now. But I have to see whether this is going to fit. So my box I bought at York Fair, um, which is what I've asked Raymond to um, help make them. So you've got a front like that, and you've got a lid like that. But as you can see, plenty of room for me to play around with. I'll be putting things on the wall and uh, I'll come back and take you through the next stage. But for now, I've had enough. And I'm stopping and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye for now.